goes without a doubt. I got you. All that stuff, which is true. I mean, I'm just not the dog. Everybody. We're glad to see such a great crowd here and lots of uh, honorees for some very special programs. Uh, before we begin, um, obviously everyone knows it's been a tough week in the school world, and I just would like to ask everyone to start the meeting by uh, having a moment of silent reflection for Superintendent Lovett, for all of the faculty, staff, students, and the community in Marshall County. Thank you. Um, I'm proud uh, of our OHS group. Uh, uh, Mr. DeLacy uh, informs me that it was uh, blue, and blue and orange day there today and had some students decked out in that. And I think Ms. Eskridge is decked out in that honor tonight. So uh, we will be continuously thinking about uh, uh, that community and also reflecting on uh, how hard we work and, and, and the work that we do in keeping the students here safe. I know there was a bit of a scare today with a lockdown at OHS. That lockdown was not anything that happened in the building. It was actually uh, stuff that happens in the neighborhood. And from time to time, if the police are called to a neighborhood, they'll tell our schools just to make sure all the doors are locked, which we do, that business operates normally within the, the walls of the building. So uh, uh, we uh, take all that very seriously and work very hard uh, from our administrative team all, all through uh, our teaching and other staff uh, in all of our buildings. So, uh, uh, but, but we certainly are uh, um, cognizant of those events and, and sad and offer our hearts and uh, support to Marshall County. Um, well, tonight is, uh, and this whole month is School Board Appreciation Month, uh, and there are several gifts to the board members here, so don't forget to do that. We want to thank our schools for supporting that. Uh, and we want to certainly thank uh, the board members uh, that we have tonight. Mr. Uh, Griffith can't be here tonight, he's out of town. Um, but, but Mr. Edge, uh, Mr. Blaney, Ms. Eskridge, and Ms. Decker for the commitment that they make to the students of our district. And that is really why they're here, as their commitment to helping our district uh, and our students uh, in this community thrive from an educational standpoint. So. Thank you to the board members for what you do and your willingness to serve and, and make the tough decisions. And speaking of tough decisions, um, I have a grave concern uh, regarding the proposed budget. Um, and I think it's important for uh, me to share this to get it out there so folks understand the proposal. And, and, and we recognize that it is just the first proposal. Um, but it is ironic that we have uh, some award-winning arts folks here tonight, uh, and that happens because of a very significant financial commitment by the five members of this Board of Education. But uh, if that budget is passed as it is proposed, uh, it would mean almost $2 million of cuts to our budget for next year. Um, and that would be very, very, very difficult for us to manage without cutting into programs that are outstanding programs. Not just arts, but all kinds of other programs that we have uh, that are exceptional programs. So, you know, one million of that is, is in transportation funding. Uh, and then there's several other buckets of money uh, th that, uh, that help us. Um, help us to continue to provide high quality, very unique, uh, outstanding educational experiences for the students that we serve from preschool through 12th grade. Uh, and so I implore those of you sitting there uh, to support education funding because it does matter, it is important, uh, and let the members of our General Assembly know that how important it is to you in the work that we do in our school district. Um, our board uh, will be meeting in joint session with the Board of Education of the Davis County Public Schools on Tuesday. And the focus of that meeting will be uh, the state budget 
and we're going to ask both boards to adopt uh, some priorities as far as funding for uh, schools in this state, not just in this county, uh, but all over the state. Uh, so it is, uh, it really is incumbent upon all of us to uh, continue to advocate for support for public education. Um, the last thing that I want to mention uh, tonight is that uh, we did have the opportunity, Mr. Smith, Ms. McCarty, and I had the opportunity this week to go to Frankfurt. And in addition to talking about that state budget with some of our lawmakers, we, um, we also were able to uh, pick up some accolades for uh, the work that we're doing in trying to maintain efficiency, which saves us money and allows us to uh, continue to provide the resources on the front line to our students. Uh, in classrooms and in programs like our music programs. Uh, Sutton was the 400th Energy Star school in the Commonwealth, and that basically means it is uh, a significant reduction in energy costs. So I have a, uh, a proclamation from the House of Representatives, and I have uh, this from the Department of Energy and the Governor's Office for the board, um, and we'll display this in our central office. But again, it's a uh, we're hoping uh, to, to have more schools as we continue to work on the energy footprint. And uh, Mr. Smith will be providing some information to board members about some projects that we'd like to start with that will uh, save some of those energy costs for us. And in this era of very tight budgets, the more we can save, the more money we can allocate to the students and to our schools. So that's our priority. Uh, and that's all I have, and I know uh, you all may have some stuff uh, to say about the budget either next week or later on, but uh, um, I do appreciate you all for the support that you've given me uh, to be able to be so vocal uh, and advocate for the students here, because that's really what I'm doing. I'm advocating for the students in this district and for us to continue to provide the great services that we're providing. Uh, but it is a time of potential crisis if we don't act. Does anybody have any questions or comments for the superintendent right now? Um, from the budget standpoint, is there, are we still working off just uh, his proposed uh, from, yeah, the, but from the, the address, from his address, or? Well, there is a there is a bill file that is okay. his budget bill. Okay. Now the, the the House and the Senate will take that up. The House first, sure. Uh, and uh, I would expect, based on the conversations that I've had. Uh, that there'll be some of those things that will be addressed. Uh, one of the main items for us, in addition to these cuts, in addition to the two million in cuts, is this board passed a recallable nickel uh, last spring, uh, and that five cents that goes into uh, our facility fund from our local taxpayers is to be matched by the state. And so we passed that and have paid it, um, and that has not made it in the budget. So we want that to get in the budget because that will help us to continue uh, the renovations and continue the work that we do in making sure that all of our facilities are as great as, uh, as they have been and certainly as great as those that we've just recently been renovated. So Well, not just ours. It's not Davis just County ours, is, there's several right. recallable yeah. nickels there, there are, the and including Davis County. And, and, and this is the, the first time. time that they've not funded the recallable nickel. Yes. So. Somebody's called the governor and our representatives and senators and explain that to them. <coughs> Devil, someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on then, we'll start with our board recognitions. Uh, Dr. Rick, you want to handle that? Uh, okay. Mr. Stites is coming first to, to uh, take care of our uh, Allstate uh, uh, accolades in the music programs, and he'll be back. Thank you, Dr. Rick. And I want to reiterate, this kind of program doesn't happen by accident. We've been building this thing for many years, and the, uh, the kind of success that you're going to see exhibited tonight is a result of a lot of teachers over the last 20 years that have made some significant changes in our student lives. Uh, those teachers are able to work in our schools because of the support of a board and an administration that really cares about what happens for our students. So we appreciate it very much. Um, what we have is a outstanding example of what our arts program does do. Uh, we have a number of students from our district that equal or in some cases surpass even the arts magnets in our state. 
So you would have to go all the way to SCAPA or Y-PASS to find anything that, that supersedes us as far as the quality of what occurs. Um, this is a, we want to congratulate tonight our Kentucky All-State Choir, Orchestra, and Band students. These students are selected through a rigorous audition process that requires months of preparation and years of training to succeed. They compete first in our local district and then in a statewide process that allows them to compete individually with students from across the state. A small percentage of the thousands of students who begin the audition process each year actually attain this honor, with many of them identified for college music scholarship offers as a result. I did want to mention that uh, one of our groups, the band group, uh, we had Andrew Gillum, who has made all state band third chair on trombone. He and Mr. Barr at Western Kentucky University tonight uh, because they have a band clinic that was rescheduled from last week's uh, Snowmageddon, and so that's why they're not here tonight. But we're going to start, I'll let the, the teachers introduce their students from our junior high division, uh, Ms. Alicia Meyer from OMS. Um, OMS North is represented in two different all states, the Kentucky American Choral Directors Association, which was held in November, and I had six students selected, two of who are not able to be here tonight, um, Brooklyn Williams, who's actually playing basketball for OMS in the tournament, and Dominic Perez. But in addition to them, uh, these four ladies, and then the KMEA, which will be in two weeks, that junior high all-state, um, Dominic Perez and Ava Wiggins were selected. So I'd like to present their certificates to them. I'll start with Ava. School Choir with the director, Ms. Jennifer Wiggins. Good to be teacher now. I got to be mom for a minute. Y'all can hear me. Um, these are, I have six students who have been selected to um, the upper classmen all state choir. I had two freshmen who were selected for the junior high all state choir who aren't here today, and that is Emma North and Noah Tucker. So they will be um, performing in the same choir that Ms. Meyer's students are. So these are our students. This is Austin Adams, senior. This is his fourth all state? Fourth, fourth all state. Yep. This is Bree Somerville, a senior. And his first all state. <laughs> this is Autumn Stoley, a senior, and her second all state. John Brink, who isn't here today, who is a sophomore in his first all state. So these are our students. Mm -hmm. and I do want to point out with our all state orchestra members coming up that this is, I believe, the largest group from 
Owensboro High School for orchestra in many years, at least 20 years. So, Ms. Jones and our All State Orchestra members. We're very proud of our students. We have five going this year. We have three, we have two different string ensembles the Commonwealth String, which is a string only group, and then the Full Symphony Orchestra. So, we have um, three students going for the Symphony Orchestra. This is Braden Hood, senior going for violin. My son, Nathan Jones, sophomore, also violin. Uh, cellist, Caleb Wiggins, senior. And these three are going to the Symphony Orchestra. Oh, Kayla McCarty is going to play in Commonwealth Strings on violin. And Ben Sexton, senior, is going for Commonwealth on viola. So we're very excited. And I'll reiterate what Mr. Stites said. If you look at the roll call of schools around the state that have the kind of kind of honors in music. It's the performing arts magnet schools. And so this is incredible. Very, very proud of our program for this. So congratulations to all students and to all teachers and to Mr. Stutz. Our second uh, honor tonight, I'd like to uh, bring up uh, uh, John DeLacy, and uh, of course Miss Burnett is here, and she <coughs> actually deserves to share this as well you can, you can from, from, from the groundwork that she laid. But uh, uh, Owensboro High School has been named uh, to the eighth annual Advanced Placement AP Honor Roll. Uh, our district is among the 447 public and private districts in the U.S. and Canada that have shown commitment to expanding access to AP coursework while also improving student performance. Inclusion on the AP District Honor Roll is based on three years of AP data during which a district must increase participation and performance levels. So, uh, you know, the, this is a very prestigious award also to be named one of the very few, I think the only one in Kentucky, two in the state, two of, in the state of Kentucky, uh, named to the Advanced Placement Honor Roll. So great recognition for our high school. And Mr. Belasi has some really big posters that are Honor Roll posters. I'm sure you're going to see up. those around the high school. The so up the really? there, there you go. They're Thank you proud. and congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, the John, we want a picture. We're going to get a quick picture. Thank you. 